What's up everyone and welcome to FAQ 118 Today, I have a lot of things to say There's gonna be a couple of changes with me and my channel Last week, I came to the conclusion that uh, I am maybe working way too hard When I got back from Spain after, uh, you know, sending out Solar Guitars, a new batch it was a Sunday evening, I got home and I was just working constantly up until Wednesday I didn't even set my foot outside this apartment in three days I was just basically working, sleeping, working, sleeping, working and at that point I realized that this is not working out, basically I cannot do this, I cannot sit and work like this It's not a healthy situation I already talked about this with my members but basically I've come to the decision where I have to separate my home and my working or my life and my working life and uh, having my office in my own apartment is great for a lot of things but I think I've come to the point where it's just so hard to blend my life and my working life together that I have to I have to move out So I decided that I need to get an office space to work in Something I can go to every day Rather than, you know, going in and out of my room and back to the kitchen and front to back all the time It, it just, it, it doesn't work And to be honest, in the long run It will probably affect my whole family situation as well And you know, it will affect my kids I need to get an office so I can get out of here When I get home, back here, that's enough No more work I need to sit, be with my family, you know, stay away from this This is the biggest culprit right here, I think It's my phone It's basically always, you know, someone calling, someone texting me It's... I, had to, I have to shut it off, basically I had a long discussion with uh, Luis about this and uh, I think for the sake of our marriage and my life in general that it's time right now to make this big ass shift and uh, you know I thought I would be able to do it for a couple more years maybe but you know what my channel has grown a lot bigger I mean this year so far has just been you know it's been steadily growing all the time I've never grown as quick as this and uh, it's just you know put a lot of pressure on me to work harder and harder and I think I uh, reached uh, the turning point basically so tomorrow for me tomorrow for you guys this past monday uh, i will go check on an office space and i'll make a video about it so uh you'll see i think it's time that i maybe take a little small step back and uh focus a little bit more on myself and after that little reality check right there let's start with the faq dude you know the thing i just said about not working hard uh I Okay, not just yet This past week we released four new 7-string solar guitars We have a V 2.7, an E 2.7 Highly requested And we have an A 1.6 uh, trans red And an A 2.7 white With maple fretboard <gasps> A lot of options for 7-stringers out there In uh, both the lower, less expensive models And in the higher end So there you go, there's a bunch of shit happening and there will be more releases in the coming weeks so stay tuned for that, I'm really excited about this there's a lot of new guitars coming that I can't really wait to share with you guys but okay, with that said positive all, let's open my eyes I'm not tired I'm not tired at all okay, first question Steven Heise, hey Ola, you review a lot of gear how do you get the stuff you review? what happens to it after review? greetings from New Zealand thank you so much Steven <laughs> Steven <laughs> Okay, so when I started my YouTube channel I borrowed all the gear All the amplifiers I drove around in Stockholm Picked up and dropped off uh, amplifiers I was part of a, a discussion forum here in Stockholm and Sweden uh, So I found people that had amplifiers I went and borrowed them, drove them to my place Recorded them and drove them back basically Then after a while, you know, some brands started to uh, reach out to me Ask me if I wanted to do demos Or like just want to try something out Like Seymour Duncan was probably one of the first ones who sent me a box of pickups so I made a video and then after that it's been more of a mix between what I want to demonstrate and other brands that reach out to me and ask me to demonstrate something but now 
and for the past two years, thanks to you know me having solar guitars and also because of me starting my YouTube membership thing, having those income streams has let me become more free in what I do. So as of right now, all the things that I try out is stuff that I buy myself. And uh, like Willa Chug, that's just stuff I buy from Tolman or from uh, you know a store here in Stockholm or something like that. What happens to the gear afterwards? Most of the gear, like pedals and small stuff like that, I give away to my members every week. So, uh, but then again, I also have a storage where I have a lot of shit. You know, the freedom that Solar Guitars and the YouTube membership thing has given me is just a lot nicer. I mean, I can make whatever I want, basically. It's really nice for me because I think I make better videos. Basically, I make videos of what I think is interesting and what I think is fun. And hopefully that will show in the video that you can see that I'm having fun and, uh, you know, doing stuff that I like. Thank you so much. Alaya El Shiver, for the next FAQ, what is your opinion on PV Valking? I have one and I love mine. Love your stuff, by the way, especially your carcass tone video. Thank you. PV Valking, I don't think the PV Valking is in production anymore, but I remember when it came out, it was, you know, it's a tube amplifier, but it wasn't expensive at all. I mean, if you compare it to all the other tube amplifiers that were available back then, it was a good amplifier, I must say. I remember playing one. I tried one in a rehearsal space and it's like, Dude, this is a solid tube amplifier and it's good for metal. If you have one, you're happy. Awesome. You're happy. I'm happy. That's what it's all about, okay? As long as you're happy, I'm happy. Shit. Nate Edwards. Hey, Ola, I just got my A2.6 FB uh, in the mail last week and it turned out to be a phenomenal guitar. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, not plugging myself, by the way. SolarGuitars.com. Guitars for sale. I like it a lot, but I'd like to see it in other colors and shapes. Do you have any plans to venture forth with extended scale guitars in the future? Okay, extended scale. Uh, great question. Thank you so much. Happy that you're happy with your guitar. If you're happy, I'm happy. We just talked about that. But we do have a bunch of guitars that are extended scale. We have a bunch of six string uh, 27 inch, which for me is baritone. We have a couple on the way as well. So, I mean, if you watch the website and you don't think that we have any uh, extended scale guitars, there will be a couple more coming, I promise. Okay, thank you. Veneman and Cryptic. I'm guessing you've answered this in the past, but how did you start playing guitar? Since there are so many instruments out there, why do you choose guitar? Okay, so I remember it so clear. It was in uh, sixth grade. I noticed that we, when we had music class, suddenly there were like two or three guys. They sat with a guitar and was able to play a guitar. And I was like, holy shit. Where did that come from? Like, how did they learn to play guitar like that? And how quick, you know? I know my dad and uh, play guitar, my sister plays guitar, but I didn't really have an interest for it. Uh, so I just like, oh, okay, I picked up the guitar. And then I had a friend who got me to listen to Nirvana. And when I started listening to Nirvana and Kurt Cobain passed away, I was probably 12 or 13 years old, probably 13. I started to get interest for other things other than, you know, computer games and computers, basically skateboarding and guitar playing. I just sat and played and Nirvana is a great band if you want to quickly learn guitar because, you know, there's a, a lot of easy chords and uh, it's just easy playing songs, uh, which is really good for a beginner. After that, I kind of quickly ventured into metal and uh, metal is a lot harder to play. <laughs> That's what I noticed. But the good part about this is that, you know, my, my brother and my sister, they had an electric guitar at home. So there was already a guitar that I could, you know, just sit out and try when I was home. And I remember it, you know, I remember the strings being so sharp. Like if you did like a D chord, that the strings were so sharp and they really cut into those small little wiener fingers of yours and you know you just didn't have any strength at all and the first riff i learned was very easy without the wham bar though Looks Eifert. Hey Ola, I play guitar and I reckon I'm easily as good as you. Maybe better. Oh, love the humbleness right there. Great. My question is, how did you get recognized as I want to get recognized? Thanks, Luke UK. I have the same phone case as you too. Awesome. Excellent question. How do you get recognized today? I think it's really hard to compare. Like, how did someone get recognized? You know, how do people go from here to becoming a huge star in the scene? I mean, it's... It's hard to say. I think first and foremost of all, you have to offer something 
that people want and need or want to hear in terms of music if you're, you know, if you're in a band or if you're a home recording guitar player or something like that. Probably just showing your skill on Instagram and YouTube and just making something that people enjoy. I think that is a great way to start. However, you know, me and my YouTube channel is not an overnight sensation in any, any remark. When I started my YouTube channel, like 2009, 2010, I already had built up like a relationship with other people on the Andy Sneap forum, for instance, or the John Petrucci forum. So people already knew who I was, sort of, you know, they, you know, I was the helpful guy, I helped people with a guitar tone. I was involved in the discussions that were on those forums. So, you know, people, you know, people trusted me and people, you know, thought that I was a good guy. So when I eventually started making my YouTube videos, I already had a small sort of following that watched my videos. Now, when I started making my YouTube videos and I did amplifiers and, you know, played songs and all that, I was sort of early with this. So no one had really done it to the same extent as I was doing it. I mean, there's some couple, but basically this field on YouTube was not as saturated as it is today. So uh, I was just basically cramming out content and people loved it because they hadn't really seen anything like it. I mean, I was utilizing amplifiers because people want to know if amplifiers are good or not. So I was using amplifiers to portray my songs and you know, people are interested in the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. How does it sound? I, maybe I want to buy one. So they searched for it on YouTube and since I was the only guy making the amplifier demonstrations, you know, that's how I got my views and eventually everything grows with that, my band. Uh, so, you know, so dude, as long as you keep in mind that it's not going to be an overnight success. It's all about putting in the work and the effort into it and eventually maybe you'll have a little bit of luck and you know, someone will recognize you. I don't know, it's really hard to say. I've been talking about this in a lot of years for clinics and stuff like that and it's not getting easier at all. And today it's like, sort of like an open book really. The rules change this all the time. So what I said a couple years back, they do not apply to how you become famous or how to get out there today. You just have to adapt with the times and just keep up with the trends basically. So there you go. Dude, Luxifer, good luck. You're gonna need it. Borut Posad. Hey Ola, have you considered signing and numbering the first 100 guitars when you release a new type of solo guitar? Stay awesome. Thank you so much. You know what? This is something we've done from the start of uh, sologuitars.com, the solo guitars website where we sell guitars and uh, I get money and you get guitars and wood. Okay, I'm, I'm strangled by this microphone cable. Let's see if I can find something here. Whoppa. What is this? Yes, okay, great. So, something we have on solo guitars is, uh, are the limited series. And uh, these are different guitars that we, uh, they're called the LTD. Uh. <laughs> great. So we have this LTD series occasionally. Uh, a couple of guitars all the time, like the artists, for instance, that comes with these. They come with the Solar Guitars Certificate. And all of them are signed by me. They're numbered by serial number, uh, Ola England, owner. And these come with all those guitars. So you get a certificate for your guitar if it's a limited series, okay? Obviously, we cannot do this for all the guitars, but uh, for the limited series, yes. Great. Scotty Johnston, Hi, I'm from Ireland. I'm big into anything to do with Vikings. Do you have any interests in Vikings? Um, yes, Vikings. Really good. Scandinavian Vikings. Obviously, Vikings are very cool. You know, very brutal and, uh, you know, it's a lot of blood. Axe, uh, helmets with horns and uh, just like in the series. It was basically exactly like it was in the Vikings series that's going on History Channel or whatever it is. I think Vikings are cool and I think the history part about it is really cool and the lores and all that. But I, I think that right now it's getting milked a little too much by bands in general for tourism and obviously i mean that's basically all we have here in sweden i mean everyone else has their own cool things you know the egyptians have their pyramids and all that what do we have we have vikings that's pretty cool though but i think too many bands milk this to an extreme extent and it becomes more about the viking theme more than the actual music or composition but you know that's just me i know a lot of people enjoy 
like these bands that have big ships on stage and you know it's it's become a more theatrical thing more than anything else and I think that's cool for me it's all kind of demystifying is that even a word? demystifying it's actually a good word okay demystifying okay so it basically demystifies the whole viking thing and uh yeah for me viking is uh, daily business you know it's not easy being a viking <laughs> okay so i've been fingering I've been fingering myself no, I've been uh, trying to figure out a good riff for today now uh, based on the guitar I have this is a guitar that's tuned to standard no. oh no, okay fake news Ola this is not tuned to standard E this is uh, E flat okay, let me try and show this anyway but the real riff is in standard E but I'm playing it in uh, E flat so this is the intro for Pizza Y. it goes like this okay, so slow Great. Lamest riff of the day ever. Mike Seward. Hi, Ola. You were talking about going to Barcelona. Should we expect a vlog? If not, can we get some more? I love those vids. Okay. Uh, yes, I was in Barcelona and in Girona for the guitar thing. And I did make a vlog. But you're going to hate this because I made that uh, member exclusive vlog. <laughs> Which is something I've done a lot more now. Some of the vlogs that I do for smaller trips and stuff like that is becoming member exclusive now for the bigger ones, you know, when I go to Dimebag's grave and stuff like that obviously that's going to be on the channel uh, you know, for everyone to see so when I do smaller trips like this it will be more of a member exclusive thing more than anything else and I'm sorry to say it but, you know I mean, I make a little bit more casual vlogs for my members I'm not sure everyone uh, would be interested in watching those but the members, they are that's why they pay extra so there you go, thank you Mike Jamie Strisic Ola, Ferrari is not muscle car they are closer to supercars Sean S oh, Ola, lol, facepalm Ferrari isn't a muscle car, lol oh shit, oh shit I, oh. oh, what did Ola say? oh no, oh so stupid oh, stupid Ola, oh shit I'm a human being, okay? I don't really care that much about cars anyways oh stupid Ola, oh, I know so much oh, I'm this guy on, on YouTube comments I know so much oh Ola, trying to downplay Ola I'm so much more awesome uh, than Ola because I know so much I know Ferrari is in a muscle car oh shit you can shove your lol up your ass seriously Sendron hi Ola, would it be possible to run a computer VST without cabs IRs into power amp effects return with any good results let's say your STLO Langland patches into a few katana 100 head effects return into a cab thanks for great videos and don't burn out love from a paying member thank you so much uh, I actually made a video about this I'll link it up here and I wouldn't see a problem with doing it this throughout I haven't experimented that much with this but the only thing you need to be concerned about is that you're sending the correct level from your audio interface to the effects loop of your uh, power amplifier or whatever you're using something I noticed when I tried this setup was that you're gonna get a little bit of a digital noise happening uh, that's just like some, some grounding basically like digital grounding or something like that oh Ola you don't know shit talk, what are you talking about oh grounds are not floors it's uh, ceilings whatever f*** you uh, when I was trying this out there was a little bit of a, a floor like a noise floor of some weird stuff happening when I was not playing maybe it's because of my power situation right here if you just figured that out I don't see any problem with doing it this right it's probably a really good way of doing it basically because you can you know you can send a bus in your DAW before it goes to a cabinet you can have you know both a cabinet and a microphone situation and then in your DAW you still have that signal going into a you know cab impulse response plugin 
and you can go with that into uh, front of house, basically. So there's a lot of options with this. And uh, yeah, I'll, we'll definitely see more of this. I mean, now that plugins are just so badass. Mick Bitter, hola. Oh, you said you're coming to New York. When? Yes, I was in New York this past week for one day only. <laughs> Can't really say I was in New York. I basically just uh, went there. Actually invited by YouTube, so that's nice. I was invited to come uh, to this exclusive a YouTube membership event. A total of 10 YouTubers talking and brainstorming about YouTube membership, which is really cool. They invited me because, you know, I'm doing a really good job with the YouTube membership things. It's nice to be appreciated like this by YouTube because, you know, they, they've asked for me to beta test different membership features and stuff like that. It's, it's nice to see that they recognize that I'm doing a good job and uh, real nice of them to invite me to New York, even if it was just for one day. But anyways, I was in New York this past week and uh, it was awesome and I'm doing a vlog for members. Jesse M, thoughts of the In Flames guitar tone from Clayman? Great, great question. In Flames, okay. Disclaimer, I listened a fair bit to In Flames back in the day during the 90s, up until Colony actually. Behind Space, listen to this asshole. I mean, In Flames were sick as f during the 90s. And I listened to them up until Colony, and then they released. What album was that? Clay Man. That's the album. Great. Okay, let's just listen to the guitar tone. This is a good guitar tone, but. For me, at this album, I'd stop listening to them because they were so much different from before, in my opinion. I mean, I remember hearing this song. This is not a favorite In Flames song of mine. This is a good riff, I must say. But the chorus. Pimble Map. No. This was not my In Flames. And I know this is the part where people started listening to In Flames for real. And they kind of, you know, that's this is the album where they sort of, where they got to the next level. But it wasn't my type of In Flames. I stopped listening to In Flames at this point. The guitar sound. It's good. It's a good guitar tone. Probably a 5150 or something like that. So I haven't paid attention to in flames after colony basically because i heard this and was like what this is not in flames heard it stopped listening and i haven't given them a chance since then but you know what i will probably listen through the whole in flames discography in one of my ola checks out videos uh, that will come out soon so yes i am gonna listen to in flames maybe i missed something who knows? I'm gonna find out anyways. So thoughts on the Inflames guitar tone from Clayman? Yes, it's a great guitar tone. But back in the day when this album came out, I did not like the direction of this band and where they were heading. You know, I wanted this. I wanted this, man. This is sick. This is sick. It's, this is 94. F***ing hell. This is shit, man. So yeah, in flames. There you go. And that was the last question. Guys, thank you so much for understanding and listening to me. And uh, understand that I also, you know, I'm a human being just like anyone else. And I'm just trying to fix my life right here about what I talked about in the beginning of this video. And I hope you have patience with me and, uh, you know, that you understand what I'm going through. And uh, I think this change, going to a new office, is gonna probably help me and maybe even make my videos better. I have no idea. We'll just have to see. It's a new chapter in my life. So there you go. That's uh, my little FAQ for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section of this video and I will check them out today or tomorrow when you're watching this. And also on this one, I'm doing the premiere thing for the first time again. So uh, while you've been watching this FAQ, I've been sitting here and you can interact with me. And uh, I guess that's pretty cool. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget, you can buy merch down here. Teespring. You know, Wallet Chug. 
all the shit, all the testing shit. Master of the Universe. You can buy shit. It's great. It's a great way of supporting me. Okay. Why did it sound like I was about to cry there? Yeah, maybe I am. Bye!